Hello, and welcome to the Bon Ton, an Indie Plus show in which we play an ongoing game of Urban Shadows set in New Orleans. This show is in accordance with the Indie Plus community standards. If you'd like to know more, please visit IndiePlus.org. The show is rated R and comes with warnings for sex, violence, cursing, and the like. It's urban fantasy, but with the grit of the wire. We play Le Bon Homme in arcs of five sessions, each one covering different plots and possibly with a different cast. The cast for this arc includes Ariana Ramos playing Madame Floral the Fay, Seth Harris playing Victor Lafitte, the Immortal, Justin Rogers playing Carlos Hawkins, the Wolf, Liz C playing Eloise Touton, the Vampire, myself, Brendan Conway, playing Sean Healy, the Hunter, and your GM, Jamal Brown, playing lots of scary folks. And now, without further ado, enjoy the game. Laissez le bon temps rouler. So we're just going to run through everybody. You'll do an introduction, who you are, uh, what you look like, what, is, what you want us to know about uh, Madame Floral. Um, tell us uh, how long you've been in the city, maybe what brought you to the city. Uh, and then I'm going to have some questions as you go through the whole thing. All right. Um, Creole raised, Madame Floral has been known within the music community and at many times has been seen or thought of as a muse. She owns a local bakery, thought to have finally settled down once and for all, but she's really there to make sure that the city and her people continue to strive on. Um, what she loves about humanity is that despite its many failures, it hasn't let that stop them and the fact that sometimes they can be very pretty. Uh, <laughs> my closest confident, uh, confident is my ex who I still keep in contact with who um, is a, represented to, a representative to the Supreme Court. I keep him happy in order to make sure that the feather fares well upon my city and I desperately need to cast out the evil that's been strangling the children's imagination choking out their need of music and art because music is what keeps the spring court dancing and making flowers. Nice. I like it. Why, uh, why, so why have you been exiled? Most of the Fae, uh, if they're here, um, the common thought is they've been exiled from their court. Um, I chose to, to leave and then I was officially exiled. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. And how long have you been here in New Orleans? I have been here for um, about 50 years. Nice. 50 years. How old Eloise. Do you to be? Um, I appear to be either late 20s or early 30s. Gotcha. That's a good question. And I completely take advantage of every time destruction happens. It's like, what photos? <laughs> You've never seen me before. <laughs> so that's a, that's an interesting thing. So Katrina, would you have changed identities at that point? Um, it is always that I don't really change too much about myself. Mm -hmm. I just sort of remove whatever... <laughs> shows that I was there before, like, hey, here's a picture or film of her, and then later on it's like, we can't find it. Where did it go? <laughs> gotcha. Nice. All right, you're up, Eloise, the vampire. Yeah. Um, so I am Eloise Touton, and I am a local to New Orleans. I have lived here my entire life. Um, I'm in my mid-20s. Um, I appear in my mid-twenties. I am in my mid-twenties. I'm a newly embraced vampire. Um, I have, it says who turned me. Um, uh -huh. That is TBD, the name at least. I need to, <laughs> I need to figure out uh, their name. But basically, I was, I was a local nurse um, before this, basically. And I was turned by a group of local vampires to basically keep them in supply of blood. So that's kind of the scheme that I'm invested in now. Gotcha. Is 
trying to make sure that people have enough blood, at least like the local vampires do. Um, and I've been funneling them to that and kind of struggling with my job as a nurse <laughs> while I do so, <laughs> because technically this blood should be for dying people. Nice. <laughs> not for dead people. Well, no, yeah, not for dead people or dying people. Um, and yeah, I've started, I've started, you know, thinking a lot on death and uh, such. Um, so much so that, like, maybe I am considering helping some people towards their death. You know, the elderly. I see all this suffering and coming to terms with the fact that I will never change and continue. I, I start to feel very, very. I'm starting to feel very, very bad for these people, basically, and want to help in some way. How much of the uh, vampire world, vampire politics, have you seen since you're newly turned, right? How much of that are you aware of or are you in on? I don't think I'm aware of much, basically. Like, I figure I know the guy who turned me, and he's kind of the one I give the blood to. And maybe okay. I've seen him speaking to a few people. Mm -hmm. So far, I've been kept very isolated. Also, because I think one way um, for my character to kind of cope was, is just for her to throw herself into her work and the mortal world and her friends and things like that. So she's been trying to stay out of vampiric politics gotcha. and just give this guy the blood when he comes and he asks for it. How do you deal with your uh, cravings? Is it blood or is it emotion? Is it? No, no, what I'm, is... I'm going to go with blood. Let's go classic vampire. All right, nice. So do you... Well, go ahead. You got it. No, um, I think I, I've been dealing with it okay. I think, like, my character's... Been, like, basically, I've just been trying to cope um, with the moment, but it's it's starting to get difficult, like, because I need to feed daily, um, and things are starting to go missing. So I've tried feeding on people, but it's still, like, very difficult for me. I find, kind of... Uh, I don't like it basically. It just makes me feel like a creeper. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, my assumption is then you've never actually uh, killed a person, uh, a mortal, through through feeding. I say not yet because it's urban chef. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Not yet. All right. Sean Healy. You're Hello. up next, sir. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm Sean Healy. I, uh, I kill demons and other things. Mostly demons. Uh, and I'm also a bicycle courier. Uh, and it's great. I love it. Um, gets me all over the city. It's enjoyable. I get to, get to ride around, feel the wind in my hair. Nice. Don't make fun of me or I'll kill you. Just joking. Or not. Um, I've only been in the city for a couple years. Uh, I came here after everything went down with my old hunting group. I was part of this whole little group, uh, and we moved around the whole country. We weren't stuck in any particular place. Uh, and basically, our leader got killed. Um, another member of the group decided to just exert influence, take over, and essentially led us to doing what amounted to a massive, like, plant a bomb in a public space, because it'll kill the creature that killed our former leader. And we're like, that's basically a terrorist attack. No. Um, and so that's when I split. After uh, we, we stopped it, and the group completely disbanded. Um, and I came here. Uh, I became a hunter because the leader of that group, her name was Monique, um, she saved my life. Sort of classic example, I was just a kid. She saved me from something nasty. Um, and I followed her like a puppy after that uh, and kind of had a crush on her, uh, which eventually she was just like, all right, whatever, you have some potential at shooting guns and a bow, and I will actually train you because you're not leaving me alone, and you're going to get yourself killed if I don't. Um, so almost by dogged persistence, I became a part of the group. Um, and then, uh, like I said, she died at the hands of um, a horrible demon creature. Uh, so that's primarily what I kill. 
uh, horrible demon creatures. In particular, this was like I'm envisioning there's this kind of demon that's sort of a possessor demon. It takes over people, um, okay. and they do stuff like they will they they will go around like in their regular lives and wield their influence as in the body of the person they are. They'll put on masks when they meet with each other to be like, this is my real face. Um, and they're very dangerous and very powerful. They've got lots of weird, crazy little magics. They can't possess literally anyone at any time. Um, there are some rules about who they can possess when. I don't really know what those are yet. Okay. Um, but the point, the point is in general, though, you can't necessarily tell who is one. And so I hunt them in large part because at the very least it, it convinces me I'm doing some good. Right. Um, if I can actually take one of these things out, they're old, they're big, they're scary, and they can keep coming back if you don't kill them the right way. So by me hunting them, I'm like, well, if I kill one for good, that's a big change. That's one old, powerful, ancient thing gone forever. Um, I will, of course, also hunt other things as it comes up, but... Um, that's what I personally focus on. Um, what terrible thing have I done to myself to help even the playing field? Well, yes. so uh, Monique taught me well uh, and made sure I wasn't a moron. So she basically taught me: you don't want to get into a direct tussle with them. You want to do you want to kill them safely, silently, from afar, if at all possible, um, in one shot. Uh, and so to do that. To be able to do that, I um, since breaking with the group, I had a, sort of an operation done by Warlock on my eyes using the demon blood of one of these things that I killed. So my eyes are kind of funky now. Um, I usually wear sunglasses throughout the day. Um, and at night, I if I can focus them a bit, I can sort of see very well and even do a thing where I see a tiny teensy bit in the future, which is useful for knowing where to put the arrow. Gotcha. It's hard. It's It's not really useful beyond that. It's like not enough time to do anything useful beyond putting the arrow in the right place. But this at least helps explain why I think I am competent enough with a bow to not immediately die. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, like you can simultaneously observe your target's position and momentum? Yes, exactly. Breaking, breaking the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is exactly right. Yay! I also know whether the cat is alive or dead. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, that's the demon blood. And, I mean, the, the side note of that is also there, um, our group had a practice where we, when we would kill a demon like this in the past, we would, like, do tattoos as a sign. Like, it's, an, it's another mark. It's impressive. It's a trophy. Um, they're okay. tattoos with the demon blood. So they only come out at night um, as well. And then, and then they come out on your flesh. Most of the day... Uh, or I, I keep myself covered up. I wear like longer sleeve shirts. I wear casual clothing all the time, but I wear like longer sleeve shirts most of the time, um, just to make sure nobody else gets a good glimpse of them. Uh, you know, magical creatures may be able to see them. Uh, and at night, definitely, if I want to go incognito, I cover myself up. But if uh, I want things to be to know what I am, that's when I wear like a tank top to make sure they see. All right. And um, the final question is, how are you like them? Right. How am I like these? evil possessor demons? Um, I mean, to be perfectly honest, the best answer I've got right now is, I mean, I, I'm friendly. My demeanor is friendly. I come off as, like, jovial and chipper and, like, I'm a, I'm a friend, and I also am a murderer, secret murderer person who goes and hunts and tracks people so that I can later kill them. Um, like, I probably am like them in that sense of two-facedness, where, like, I, I put on this very... Um, chipper front, and then I will kill you if you are something I'm hunting. He met Monique when he was uh, either senior in high school or like just out of high school, okay. and and that's when he started flying around, and he was with them for a while, um, and, and it's only a year or two ago that everything went to hell, um, All right. and so now he's trying to basically restart his life in a way. What does uh, mom and dad think about all this? Great question. Um, I think... Great question. Um, I think they're super disappointed in me. Probably because, I mean, as far as they know, right, they don't know about any of this other crap. Right. Um, all they knew was I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to travel around with my friends around the country for a little while, Mom and Dad, don't worry about me. And they're like, our son has turned into a vagrant. <laughs> and and now I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a bike courier. 
it's great. And they're like, oh my god. <laughs> they they are, um, I think they're parents who expected more, who, who had these expectations, but I keep them at arm's length. I, I make okay. clear, like, no, no, everything's fine, mom and dad. It's all cool. Don't come to New Orleans, please. Um, so I'm Carlos Hawkins. Um, I'm a black male, my late 20s. Got kind of wild hair. I used to try shaving it, but it just grow back overnight, so gave up on that. Um, dark clothing. Um, I've been in New Orleans my whole life, born and raised here, in sort of one of the, the poorer areas of town where I still live. Um, yeah. um, I sort of ended up uh, getting involved with with a, a gang here as like an enforcer of muscle type thing. Um, actually, like when I was 18 or so, I was starting to um, you know, have these have these. It's about when I started my transformations. Um, actually, one of the things that picked my transformation is it. You know, it's, it's built up over the years. And now I transform every night, not just the full moon. Okay. All right. So, um, <clears throat> actually, like there's this gang of criminals that was causing trouble and threatening my family, and they just went wolf and just like clawed and murdered a bunch of them. And the gang leader kind of saw me as like a problem without a without an easy solution. Um, I was just gonna keep messing with his guys unless uh, he gave me a better offer to right. just be in charge of this territory and take care of it and, and receive like you know, benefits, protection from them, and steady pay. Um, so I'm sort of in charge of this territory. Um, it's asked who's the most important person in your territory. Well, I guess yes. that'd be me, because the, uh, the the leader of the the, the citywide gang, or at least this this side of the city, isn't isn't local to here. Must let me take care of things. Um, the, uh, the best part of the change is keeping people in line with fear and respect. Um, you know, like anybody, anybody messes with, with people in, in my territory, during the day I hear about it and they're going to get what's coming to them one of these nights. So. <laughs> um, I guess what I desperately need is for my family and friends to be safe from harm. So I'm, I'm like really tight with the people in this community. Um, um, it scares me to death that something something bad could ever happen to my mom, my, my mother, who is a single mom, who raised me and my siblings, uh -huh. um, or or anybody else, any of our neighbors or things. But I'm very distrustful of outsiders or people who cause trouble. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I picked the. Uh, I said I picked the I change every night thing. Right. Um, however, I sometimes lose control while transformed. And can't resist the change when it comes. So it's just thing. It's it's sort of grown more and more unpredictable. Like sometimes now it's like usually it's not until nightfall, but now sometimes it's like you know 6:30 p.m. The sun's not even down. And I feel like I'm going to like either <clears throat> you know sometimes like try to take precautions to keep people safe, like locking myself up, or uh, or you know sometimes like well you know I've, I've got some. There's some people I want to take care of tonight, so so I'll, I'll just embrace this and go after it. Um, Make it work for you. Yeah. Is your uh, territory near near where you grew up? Yeah, I, let's say it's in the in the same same few blocks, um, there, including including the house where I grew up and with my with my mom who still lives there. All right. Yeah, um, my territory, uh, I'm widely accepted as the place protector. And people here work hard to keep the streets safe. So we don't really have a crime problem. You know, by people, sometimes I mean just me, but you know, people people will warn each other. You know, like right. word, word gets around where you know, this is a place where you don't go rob a convenience store. You don't carjack somebody if you're not from here. Um, my territory does owe fealty to someone more powerful than me, though. Like I am sort of in charge of, you know, letting letting drugs be sold here, or, um, you know, whatever other, you know, keeping keeping operations safe from from being, uh, you know, trying to keep police attention away, or or other power factions or things. You know, like it's probably I'm sure there's wizards and oracles who would who would love to 
make some things happen in this in this area. I'm sort of sort of in charge of keeping it the way it is, so that gotcha. the, the game can continue operating. Um, and I haven't decided to poo yet, but I've offered protection within my territory to someone, and now their problems are mine. So we can maybe figure out together who that is and how that happened. That is all right. Do you have you ever met who you owe fealty to? How does that? What does that look like? Are you um, are you trading goods? Are you trading services? How do you pay fealty to that? Yeah. Um. Um. I think it's mostly well. It's mostly goods, you know, like any sort of illicit commerce we have in here. We got to give a percentage to the or meet a meet a monthly quota just to okay. pay to keep the operations going. But sometimes, yeah, services too. Like I'll, okay. I'll get called up, or uh, you know, probably not even directly, but but given here's here's something I need you to take care of. And usually, if it's not going to hurt anyone who I know. Anybody in my territory? I usually don't really ask questions. I'll I'll go take care of it in a professional manner. Gotcha. Have you met this boss, <laughs> or is it always yeah. intermediaries? Uh, I want to say we met once or twice, but it's not a regular thing. Okay. No. Yeah, like like initially when I was first sort of brought into this. Yeah. You know. Right. Does uh, Carlos have a sweetie? Um, hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, let's say so. Let's, <laughs> let's say so, yeah. I mean, I, you know, like I said, in a big way, I'm a mama's boy. She's still the, the most important person in my life, but right. uh, probably isn't uh, isn't uh, immune to attachments with with the folks around here. A lot right. of warnings I'm getting from <laughs> just setting up. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the best for last, the immortal Victor. Well, good evening, there, Mr. Brown. My name is uh, Victor Lafitte. Uh, my story begins. Well, I've been many different people over the years. Of course, I'm an immortal. But uh, the face I appear as now. Uh, back in the wake of Katrina, the state uh, legislature of, New of uh, Louisiana passed uh, Act 35, which uh, declared uh, all the entire state school system in an emergency status. And uh, it opened the door for many uh, charter school providers to come in and provide their services, particularly for uh, New Orleans and the youth there that were suffering. So uh, I came back to New Orleans as a, uh, a former son. That's how I sold myself. Uh, coming to help my people rebuild. I currently run the New Horizons Collegiate Prep Charter Schools in the Recovery School District, uh, which is based primarily in the Ninth Ward. But who I really am uh, is a German immigrant of the name Oscar Wecker. I came to New Orleans in uh, eight, the 1840s oh, nice. and uh, was killed by some crooked men who uh, imbibed me with drink and led me into an alley and stabbed me to death for the few dollars I had in my pocket. Uh, they left me to die in the bayou, and for whatever strange reason, I emerged 30 days later with a new face and a healed body. Uh, I was found, I was met by an old crone, the name of uh, Madame Delaphine, uh, who seemed to be anticipating my arrival. Uh, she had some cash that provided me with about uh, enough money to rent a room for a week, and uh, I've only seen her on rare occasions since. Uh, I lived my life as many different people, but uh, before I became Victor Lafitte, uh, my last death, well, I had lived as Clevon de la Ronde, a well-connected member of the New Orleans crime family. And I was serving a life sentence without possibility of parole for taking the lead in the assassination of enemies to the leadership of this crime family. I drowned to death during Katrina. I was in the Orleans Parish Prison, which was abandoned by the guards. Okay. I was one of the many prisoners who drowned. Uh, and once again, I awoke 30 days later after that and found myself washed up on the banks of the bayou. I lived as a vagrant for about eight months while I gathered resources from stashes I had placed around the city. It's sort of a habit I picked up early on, knowing that I might die and not have the resources I had in my previous life. Uh, 
how long I've been in the city? Well, as I said, since the 1840s, so about 175 years. Uh, once I tried to leave after the first resurrection, but by the time I got to Baton Rouge, I was stricken with a peculiar illness and felt compelled to turn back. <laughs> As I neared closer to New Orleans, I was relieved of my maladies and reason that my health is tied to this infernal city in some way. Uh, what can I not live without? <laughs> well, I know there are ladies present, but I have to touch on this. I must dine on insects. Not exclusively, though. Uh, but every few days. I found that if I do not, I begin to go into a hibernation state. Uh, my skin becomes like a uh, chitin. Um... And I have a natural compulsion to eat them, which I have come to believe is some sort of survival instinct. And I've become fairly neutral about devouring them. They aren't gross or good. Uh, but I do try to hide it from people around me. It's In most social circles, it's not seen as a <laughs> proper behavior. Uh, why do I hate myself? Uh, that is for letting my wife, Bridget, die at the hands of my crime family's enemies. A group of them were in league... Uh, Right. They were working against my underboss and knew that I was very close to him, and so to strike at me, they killed her. And this is what led to my involvement in the killings and subsequent incarceration. Uh, what do I desperately need? Well, what I need is control of the ley lines that run through New Orleans. My schools are all methodically built on top of these ley lines. And the architecture is actually designed as a conduit for the power to flow. And I'm going to use this cosmic power to resurrect my Bridget and make her an immortal like me. Nice. The problem, though, is these ley lines attract demons like fireflies to a porch light. So that is a bit of a problem. Victor, this is such a bad plan. <laughs> I'm just gonna say this right now to get it out of my system. Oh, Victor. Oh yes, that's my plan. I want it to be horribly tragic. That's what I want. Yes, that is beautiful. And you want? I have two schemes I'm supposed to detail. Do you want those yet? Or yes, let me have them. Sure. Uh, the first scheme is going to be an alliance. I want to ally myself with Hawkins' gang. Because the way to build more of these schools is to, to get in good with the uh, the people in the poor communities that I'm trying to build them in. So if I can offer protection, resources, food, safety, whatever I can to make sure they're on my side. Yes. My second one is stewardship. I need to get back control of my previous identity, Cleavon de la Ronde's wealth. Because I'm running short on money. And I know that he had a lot of money saved up, but it's a little tricky to get that money transferred to me without people becoming suspicious. Right, right. I like it. I'm going to go with Carlos, that I'm hiding something for him. <coughs> is there anything particular that you would be wanting to hide that isn't your sweetie, I'm a target? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm a, <laughs> <clears throat> um, I mean, I don't know if it's hiding, but you know, cover-ups of uh, of crime ev murder evidence sort of piles up with me. Right? <laughs> um, I guess what I, I, I could. I mean, I, I own funny, my. But, yeah. I own my own bakery, so I'm yeah. assuming that I'm not too far from your neighborhood. Okay. So the thing is, they'll be like, oh, well, was Carlos in this crime scene? And I'm like, oh, no, he was working overnight. Like, he had to get the bread ready in the morning. Okay. Yeah, I've, and, got a, I've got, like, a permanent alibi for my, my yeah, nightly job. Yeah, it's like, like, you are the worst baker I've ever had. <laughs> And for nice. some reason, I keep covering for you. Because <laughs> nice. it's also like, I haven't been robbed. Nobody's come to intimidate me ever since I hired you. Yeah. And most of the time, I let you just do cleaning. But I'm just like, secretly, I'm like, he just, he gets the dough and he punches it. And it's just not good. <laughs> Plus, there's hair in it. <laughs> <laughs> I've caught you a few times just gnawing on the raw bread because you're just like, I'm hungry, I really don't give a shit, just, I'm going to eat it anyway. <laughs> so that's IOU with that? Right? Is that yeah. 
Right, she has a debt on you, so she'll write that down, because mm -hmm. she'll cash that in at some point. Eloise! Uh, okay, so I... Oh, I found the name of the person who turned me. His name is Jacques de Laurentiis, and he's the person who gave me the sword. Because he said I needed to protect myself. I have no idea what I'm meant to do with it. Um, uh, my debts. Um, someone make sure you get fed regularly. You owe them two debts. Uh, Brendan, what's your character's name? Yeah, I apologize. This happens sometimes for me. My lower third just disappears, and I can't get it back. Um, his name is Sean Healy. Sean. Okay, so I guess I sometimes Sean makes sure that I get fed because I think I was probably walking down an alleyway and I saw him finishing off a demon who who obviously was it was a possessed human so they turn back into humans when they die. Okay. Um, and I saw the blood and I couldn't control myself so I just went and I fed on this person. Um, and obviously I used my contacts in the hospital to kind of you know get the body away in the morgue. Uh, and so now sometimes when Sean's done with one of his missions, he'll give me a call and I can kind of assist him. <laughs> <clean up>. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> nice. <laughs> um, someone has enlisted you to protect them from something very dangerous. They owe you a debt. Well, Victor, with your plans and your demons and your... Uh, I'm going to bring hell upon myself. I sort of feel like that makes sense to you. I um, think so. Probably, I mean, you specifically said the ley lines call down demons, and that's sort of my bag. Mm -hmm. um, so I totally think, like, it could be a specific demon, if you think, but it could also just be demons in general. General demon infestation. Cool. Just imagine him being called as like, hey, can you put some wards up for these demons? Cool! I'm not going to ask you what you're doing. I'm just going to put these wards up to stop demons from coming in. Yep. <laughs> I never ask if it might be harmful to the students or anything. That's I'm just right. like, what about the <laughs> I assume it's because you think I'm a professional. Yeah. Carlos. All right. Um, so my first one is almost identical to what we already established in Madame Floral. Someone is hiding you from someone or something powerful. But I guess rather than just double up a debt for the same thing, we actually have someone else helping out here. Uh -huh. um, so I think uh, Victor is also helping hide my uh, murders and things, but more like specifically through his, um, his like power connections to, to the police or to I get him to, to turn the other way. The, yeah. the, the city council and things like, yeah. like directing resources away from yeah. cases. You're just doing what you need to to protect your community, and I can respect that, yeah. Carlos. <laughs> right. Plus, he's trying to get in good with with my gang. So how many? He's how much was that? Um, I know one debt. One debt. Uh, one debt to Victor, or not a not a direct cover up like mm -hmm. floral, but. So we're trying to so push it sounds the like authority it's... in a different direction. Right. So it sounds like more like uh, uh, running legal interference or a higher level yeah. of interference. Yeah. <laughs> Finding ways to like say it was police brutality was involved in some way, like flip it back on them. Right. Yeah. So they're the ones on the defensive. Yep. Wolf lives matter. Victor. Uh, let me see. Someone has seen you die and come back to life. They haven't told anyone about it yet. You owe them a debt. Huh. You've been here for a long time, haven't you, Floral? Yes. I, I'm going to say you've seen me die. It was... I don't have all my incarnations. This isn't like Doctor Who where I have all my different uh, regenerations planned. Uh, but let me see. Before I was uh, De La Ronde, I was... So this goes back to probably like the 80s, <laughs> uh, the 1980s. So I would have been. Um, and you're you're involved in like uh, the music scene. 
And by she, that, just detail that for me a little. Um, she's basically viewed as a muse, or she helps people start up. So if there's like small, let's say there's a small community thing, like oh, all the musicians are gonna play, she is the person that you call to make sure that they're happy. You don't know what it is about her that she's just like, oh, I can get them to play, and they're just like, okay, like, <laughs> and they just do it, or like, oh, he hasn't played, he hasn't played a song in months, and she goes over there and like, they start playing again. It's everybody thinks it's a community thing, but it's really she's just putting her hand on them and inspiring them in some way. I, you knew me in the 1980s as a uh, Christopher Tremont. I was this uh, young trumpet player who was kind of like a prodigy. Little mm -hmm. did you know that I'd had like multiple decades beforehand. I looked <laughs> like I was in my 20s, but I was amazingly good with the trumpet. And uh, I think maybe you had been uh, helping me out, but I ended up owing people money because I have sort of a proclivity to gambling, being immortal, and I can't be killed. So I'm always willing to take risks because I'm like, what do I do, kill me? I'll just come back as someone else. And so you witnessed me get uh, jumped by these guys uh, and killed. And you watched him like roll me away uh, in the uh, in the body bag. And I think for me but to know that to it was you... you yeah, how, when did you see me come back to life? You came to visit my grave? I was thinking like something creepy, like yeah. I heard someone play the trumpet exactly like you, and it was just like this yeah. weird staring contest of... What the fuck? <laughs> but when you f you found it was doing it, it was a uh, it was an um, gentleman in his like his early forties, roughneck type. Yeah. And so it just didn't. But you were like, it was a song that uh, it was a song that Christopher had written for the trumpet, and okay. only shared with you. So that's why you knew it was like, how does this guy know this song? And that's when you started putting two and two together. Like this kind of maybe this is why Christopher was so good. He wasn't a a normal person. There was something weird about yeah. him. And so you uh, have a debt on me for that. So I could see you maybe having tracked me since then. So you maybe know who I am right now. Oh, That's yeah. I have plans for you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher? <laughs> Matter floral, that brings us back around to you. Um, instead of going back to Victor, which I'll probably do my last run, um, you entrusted someone with a dangerous task. They asked them if they succeeded or fail. If they succeeded, you owe them a debt. If they failed, they owe you two debts. Um, I'm going to go with the bike messenger. And it was actually a bike messaging job. I had given you some important information that was supposed to go back towards my ex. It was a envelope. It was very, I was trying to emphasize this is a very special envelope. It needs to come in before 12 at night. And you're like, sure, sure, sure. Not a big deal. So I need to know, did you succeed or not? Because <laughs> my yes. ex is the one that makes sure that the weather goes well around here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, guys, what's, what's your ex's name? Um, I'm going to go. He goes by Miles now. He's gone through many names, but that's what he's called now. All right. What, Liz? Uh, what? <laughs> the only answer to this was yes, Dark Overlord, right? <laughs> <laughs> what does he go by? Okay, <laughs> it'll come up. It'll come up. <laughs> We're gonna have a Dark Overlord. Um, I I feel like I have. I mean, you're setting me up to say um. I failed because <laughs> I was just, I was just too many things are just. I think you're just like, oh, that looks so delicate. Who cares? It's just an envelope. Why don't you use a stamp? <laughs> well, it's, it's I was I was delivering the message and basically I got caught up in a hunt right then and there. It totally took my attention away and I was like, well, it's just a package and a message. She's just a baker or well, no, actually, probably I know what you are. That's like. <laughs> 
um, I I probably prioritized the hunt over the message, which I probably shouldn't have done. But the net result is I didn't get it there in time. I feel like you're like Eloise needs to eat, guys. <laughs> chomp <laughs> chomp. <laughs> Nice. I had a body. It needed delivery. <laughs> Louise. Okay. Um. If someone bears responsibility for you becoming a vampire, they owe you a debt. So I figure that I was actually going through Carlos's territory. Um, one night, um, and I think some violence basically broke out there, maybe, maybe even with the vampires, actually, um, and I, I was probably just walking home, uh, and I was caught in the violence, and then taken away and turned into a vampire, and probably attacked, or in some part, by, uh, by Carlos, because I was oh. bleeding out on the street, and, uh... I was gonna ask, how is that my fault, the vampires attacked you? <laughs> Um, because you were the huge wolf that mowed me down. <laughs> I just imagine that he, like, kind used you as a shield. He's like, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> I, think, I, I, you know, I, I think I, prob I probably went back to the neighborhood trying to, you know, find some answers. And then, like, you know, I passed by this normal human guy who has these terrifying eyes that I remember from my death. <laughs> and, yeah. Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I owe you a debt for yeah. being responsible for you. So to make sure I have this right, Carlos mauled Eloise <laughs> and yeah. then and left her. Yeah. Maybe I, th I thought she was one of the vampires. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. And then, uh, was it Jacques? De yeah. Laurenti? Yeah. Then turned you at that point. Exactly. Gotcha. Got it. And I, I still don't know what the vampires <coughs> were doing there, basically. I haven't really asked too many questions. Um, That's okay. Go back in that part of town. <laughs> and, and not because it's a bad part of town, because there's werewolves there. <laughs> I just imagine that you walk by and Carlos is on the porch of his house and he's just glaring at you. <laughs> Sean. Okay. Uh, someone keeps you equipped and supplied. You owe them two debts. Um, I kind of feel like that's Carlos. Hey, finally someone owes me debts. <laughs> <laughs> um... I need to get arrows and bullets from someone. I agree. He's the guy. He's the guy. That fits. Get me arrows and bullets. And arrows and bullets. And arrows and bullets. <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to push forward a little bit from Eloise's story and say that, yeah, she was... She was she was very traumatized by this attack from the neighborhood, but she didn't really feel like the vampires had her the other vampires had her best interests at heart. But like she was gonna kinda be used by them. So um <clears throat> upon recognizing me, she actually she now lives in my territory for protection. Um yeah. she's she actually had the guts to come in and be like, So let me tell you what you did to me. <laughs> Um, and you know, I was. I want you to know, you know, I wasn't with those those trouble causing vampires, but uh, you know, I'm just a I'm just a poor nurse trying to trying to make it and make it in this area of town, and you know, I could use some protection too. So, he's like, did feel bad about the mauling. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe a little bit of uh, kindness and protection will will go towards making up for that mauling. Does that sound okay, Eloise? Yeah, that's uh. <laughs> so that's so Eloise so you, now also. You, so you yeah. protect me because I live in your territory. Yes. So Eloise okay. now owes me one debt. Well, I mean, it so. should go better than last time. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Eloise, like, it took her weeks to go up and finally tell him what he did. Like, he kept seeing her car pass by. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, I figured, like, I probably had, like, a huge issue with going up to you and telling you this, and you're just like, well, cool, I can pretend right. to be, you want to um, live here, and I'm like, oh, Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, I only, I only mess people up who I don't know, and if I know you now and you live here, yeah, you're, you're like family. <laughs> Fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the family that doesn't want to live there. <laughs> now, right now, at the moment... <clears throat> but you better be telling the truth about not being with those other vampires. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be trouble. Someone is the first person you call on to get something done. You owe them two debts. Woo. Well, that would be my friend Mr. Hawkins. Right. Because if all I do is protect him, you can't build a relationship out of that. I've got to show him I trust him enough to put important business in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> and so when the big things need to get done, I call in my friend Mr. Hawkins <laughs> to show him that I trust him with that. Mm -hmm.